When I found out Samsung removed S Pen support from the Fold 7, I was pretty upset about it. And I let you guys know in several videos about the Fold 7. But as someone who frequently uses the S Pen and actually just uploaded a super deep dive into all the incredible things you can do with the S Pen on the S25 Ultra, I just couldn't let it go. So I went on a mission to restore S Pen functionality to the Fold 7 and I'm about 90% of the way there. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can do it too. So the first step to getting S Pen support again is to find a suitable S Pen. And I tried every different type of stylus to find the right kind. And one of the most important features on the stylus is that it needs to have a fine tip like the original S Pen. Because if you're just using one of those rubber tips that's the size of my pinky, then you might as well just be using your finger anyway. So that narrowed it down to these three different types of stylus. These two are the two different types of active styluses I could find. They have the finest point tip because there's actually a little battery inside of the stylus and that sends a small electrical charge to the tips so you can use them on the phone. And I was really excited to be using these as a stylus on this phone because of how fine the tips are on both of them. But when I tried using these pens to draw, when I drew a diagonal line, I learned really quickly that these are not gonna work at all because of these squiggles that happen. And this is just one of the issues of the active styluses in general. So it doesn't matter which active stylus you find, you're gonna have this problem, so you can't get one of these. So that leaves this style, which still has that really fine point tip, just with a disc at the end of it. But keep in mind, the width of the disc is not the touch area, it's that fine point in the middle. And I've noticed that I could get really accurate lines with this one. Like if I draw a diagonal line here too, and then another diagonal line, you can see that those are super straight by comparison to the active styluses. And what I love about this one is that this cap is magnetic and it just quickly pops back on to protect that disc. Then when you wanna use the pen, just pop the cap off and it magnetically clips onto the back. All right, so we found a good S Pen replacement and it does write tremendously well. Like it's incredibly smooth to write with this, very similar to a real S Pen. And especially going over this crease in the middle, you can't, you can't even feel it with this particular S Pen, thanks to that little disc there. But finding an S Pen replacement is only part of the issue because drawing is not the only great part of the S Pen. There's a lot of other really good features. And the first feature we need to add back in is the screen off memo. This is the feature on the S25 Ultra where when you take your S Pen out, you can immediately start writing on the screen. And then when you tap save, that'll be saved to your Samsung Notes. Well, I found a way to do something very similar on the Fold 7. So the first thing we're gonna do is go back to our home screen, then our applications, and we're gonna find the Samsung Notes application and long press it. This will bring up shortcuts to specific parts of the Samsung Notes application. And while you can just tap something like write with pen to immediately start writing with the pen, there's a much better way to do this. So if we go back to the application again and long press it again, we can actually long press on these shortcuts and add them directly to our home screen. So now with a single tap, I can get right into note taking. And since this is a capacitive stylus, it also works with the cover screen. So if you ever need to take a quick note, you don't even have to unfold your phone. Just unlock it, tap the shortcut, and immediately start writing. Taking a look back at the Fold 6 with the real S Pen, another really awesome feature was the ability to convert handwriting to text in real time. Well, on the Fold 7, there's no real-time text conversion within Samsung Notes, but there is this option here. If you tap this, it'll select everything that you wrote, and you get an option here to convert it to text. If I tap this, it'll convert it all to text and give me a little preview here. I can then tap these three dots in the top right corner and tap Edit if I need to make any changes to the text. Then I can tap Done, then tap Add To, and then just do New Page Before. And that'll take all that handwriting and convert it to digital text in the page before it. So if I scroll down a little bit, you'll see the original handwriting right there. But if you wanna take this a step further and have true real-time handwriting to text conversion, then there is a way to do that using the keyboard. So if I scroll back up here and just tap to start typing, there's an icon on your keyboard right here with a little T and a pencil. If you tap this, it turns your entire keyboard area into a writing canvas. And everything I write in this area is gonna be converted in real time. And what's great about this feature is that it works in any application. And that's because the features built into Samsung's keyboard. So if I go to my messaging application, for example, you'll see that I still have the writing panel up and I can start handwriting a text message, email, or anything else I need. And here's a quick bonus tip. If you notice that it's not converting your handwriting fast enough, like you can just write too quickly and you find yourself waiting for it to recognize your handwriting, you can actually just tap this little back icon right here, then tap the settings on your keyboard, then scroll all the way to the bottom and tap handwriting, 
Then recognition time, you can select a faster time to speed up recognition. I don't recommend going to 0.1 seconds unless you're like an extremely fast handwriter because that recognizes way too fast. 0.3 would probably be the fastest you'd want to go. And here's an example of how fast that would be just to give you guys an idea of the difference. And when you want to switch back to the regular keyboard, just tap the T icon again, or you can tap this keyboard icon in the bottom left corner. Another really useful S Pen feature on the Fold 6 was the ability to just hold the S Pen button down and drag across photos and videos to select them. And this was just a much faster way to make those selections. Well, you can actually do something really similar on the Fold 7 by just long pressing on a photo or video until it's selected, then dragging in any direction. And now I can just drag across any other photos and videos I'd like to select. So while it's technically a bit faster with the official S Pen, it's still doable on the Fold 7. And just so you guys know, you don't need the stylus in order to do that. You can just use your finger and then drag in any direction you want. Another huge S Pen feature on last year's Fold 6 was that if you wrote down things like phone numbers, emails, websites, or even math equations, then tap this reading icon in the Samsung Notes application, you'd be able to hover your S Pen over those and get shortcuts for each of those different things. So if I tapped this internet shortcut, it would open up that website in the internet browser. And the same is true for quickly dialing a phone number, sending an email, or even solving math equations. But hovering is not something you can do with a capacitive stylus on the Fold 7. So instead, all you have to do is convert those handwritten notes to text notes like I showed you earlier. Then you'll be able to tap on them. Then just tap open link to perform the same functions as you got on the Fold 6. Now math equations is a little bit different. And in case you're wondering why this would be useful, this is extremely handy for contractors who need to get square footages of different areas so that they know how much material to order. So if you're a contractor, you can just write the names of each room, write the dimensions down, then tap these three dots in the upper right corner, then tap turn on math solver. Now just add an equal sign to the end of your equations and the math will automatically be shown. Like this is so cool that we can do this. And if you need to, you can then tap the equation and copy it. Another useful hover feature that we had on the Fold 6 is that you can hover over an icon and get a pop-up telling you what that icon is. Well, we can still do that on the Fold 7 by just long pressing on an icon instead and you'll see we get the little pop-up right there. The S Pen on the Fold 6 had a little menu called the Air Command menu, and if you tap this, you got some useful shortcuts. And a shortcut I had used all the time was this Magnify shortcut, because I wear reading glasses, and if I don't have my glasses with me, it can be kind of hard to see what's on the screen. So I would just use this little Magnify box to make it easier to read things. Now, obviously there's no Air Command menu on the Fold 7, but I did find a way to get this Magnify feature back really easily. So all you have to do is go to your settings, then search for the word magnify, then scroll to the bottom and in the accessibility menu, tap magnification, then tap magnification again, then the magnification shortcut text, go ahead and enable it and make sure it's set to press side and volume up buttons. You could also use the press and hold volume up and down buttons for three seconds. It's just not gonna be as fast. But I would not use this triple tap screen option because if you enable this one, you won't be able to pinch to zoom anymore. So with just this option enabled, if I press the side key and volume up at the same time, it'll bring up this little zoom window. And if I grab this icon, I can actually drag that around the screen. And if I tap the icon, I can either increase or decrease the amount of zoom. And when I don't need it anymore, I can just press the volume up and side key again. Sometimes on the Fold 6, there was text that you couldn't select just by long pressing on it, like if it's in a widget or something. But if you had the S Pen on the Fold 6, you could just hold the S Pen button down and drag across the text to select it. Well, guess what? I found a fix for this too. So on the Fold 7, we're gonna swipe in on this handlebar and bring out our Apps Edge. This should be on by default, but if it's not, just go to your settings, then scroll down to Display, and scroll down until you get to Edge Panels, and make sure this is enabled. And if you tap the edge panels text, then tap panels, make sure the apps panel specifically is enabled. So now that this is enabled, if you ever wanna select unselectable text, just tap AI select and draw a box around the text you wanna select. You can then tap this T icon and it'll select the text. And if there's only a small amount of text you wanna select, you can actually just draw a line through that small section, then tap the T icon and you'll select just that section. Another great feature that was built into the Air Command menu on the Fold 6 was an app called PenUp. And this was an excellent app for any artists, people who love drawing and they want to draw some more complicated things with a lot more brush types, this would be the app for you to use. Or if you're someone who's just learning how to draw, you can tap latest live drawings, then tap on something you want to learn how to draw, 
then tap learn to draw, and it'll walk you through every step of the process. Now, unfortunately on the Fold 7, there's no pen up application installed. But if you go to the Samsung Galaxy store, you can search for the pen up application and install it yourself. And once it's installed, you can pull out your apps edge, tap the edit icon, then add the pen up app as a shortcut. Now, whenever I wanna draw, I can just swipe in from the side, tap pen up, and I'll get access to all the same tools I had on the Fold 6. And by the way, I'm still just scratching the surface on all the different things you can do in this application. So if you're into drawing at all, I highly recommend checking this out. This stylus also lets you do all the normal pen type things like marking up documents, signing PDFs, and whatever else you'd need to do with a pen. Now there are a few caveats with using this as an S Pen. Like for starters, it's significantly larger than an official S Pen. But one of the bigger issues is that there's no palm rejection. So you can't rest your palm on the screen and write at the same time. So this is something that is gonna take a little bit of getting used to. Now, if you're an artist who wants to do a lot of drawing on the Fold 7 and you really need that palm rejection, you can get a palm rejection glove and that'll allow you to rest your hand on the screen while you draw. And the most obvious issue is that there's no physical S Pen button, but I already showed you guys a bunch of workarounds for that already. So if you're okay with those caveats and you wanna pick up this pen for yourself, I'll have an affiliate link to it in the description and pinned comment. In my previous coverage of the Fold 7, I said that it may not be worth the upgrade because of the loss of the S Pen. But now that we have about 90% of that functionality back for the Fold 7, I don't think not having an S Pen is a reason not to get the Fold 7 anymore. And if you want to pick up a Fold 7 now that this functionality is back, I have an exclusive bonus discount for you guys on top of the pre-order deals that you can get with the affiliate links in the description and pinned comment. Just know that the discount only lasts for 30 minutes. So if you see that it's removed when you go to check out, just come back to this video, click the link again, and the discount will be reapplied. And I know I've said this before, but since those are affiliate links, it does really help out the channel. And I literally wouldn't be able to afford all the products I review on this channel without you guys using those links. So again, just wanted to say a massive thanks to you guys. And if you're still on the fence with the Fold 7 and you wanna see my list of pros and cons after using this device for a full week, you can check out this video here. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss more deep dive Fold 7 coverage. That's it for this tech episode. Jesus loves you guys and I'll catch you in the next one.